Welcome back, everyone. Hopefully I timed that right, so now you're listening to the third and most likely final part of this little playlist on the Utah Jazz. And like I said in the previous video, what I'm going to do is, in the future I would like to maybe have this time open for question and answer. I can read the little comments on the side, and if I catch it, I can hopefully answer and talk about it. But for the for right now, what I'm going to do is I am going to talk more just about the actual game, the My Team mode, and about NBA 2K15, stuff so like that, since you've been watching it for over half an hour. I guess you might as well mention it. So this is NBA 2K15, as you all know. And this is the My Team mode, which is by far my favorite mode to play on the game. I love the mode ever since they introduced it back in, I think it was 2K12, 2K13, one of those. I don't know, 2K13. Anyway, I really, I really enjoy it. I enjoyed the first iteration of it where the whole goal of it was kind of like a stock market, where you could buy players and then if the real NBA player was doing well, their value would go up. You could get a bronze player who maybe cost 500 coins. Maybe cost 500 coins, but if he starts playing really well in the NBA, by the end of the month, he could be worth over 5,000. I thought that was a really, really cool idea. A couple of the downsides of that is like once you owned a player, you couldn't own any multiple copies of him. So that kind of made it sucky. Um, another problem was if the player was injured in real life, you couldn't buy him. Now that was a little disappointing. So like for the longest time, you couldn't buy Derrick Rose. And you know, he's one of the best point guards in the league. Everyone wants to play him and they won't let you buy him. So that was kind of bad. And then the next generation of it, they changed it up where they changed it up a little bit. I don't really remember that one much. It might only be in these two. I don't remember. I don't know. I'm going to have to look back on that. So I guess I'll just talk about this one then. This one, I was a little upset at first. I didn't really un like or understand the contract system. I don't like that idea of how you I work on I work on getting these great players. I work on spending these great players. And then I have to pay to use them. I don't really like that. Just give me the players and let me play them. Just let me play with the players I want. That's the whole point. So now I have to like keep money aside to get contracts. And before I didn't real I didn't realize that you could just pay for contracts. I thought that was at least nice that you can at least pay for contracts because I wasn't gonna go surfing through overpriced boosters to just trying to find contracts and get a, a player and play and pay for a pack that gives me a great chance of getting a gold player and get a silver player who I already own. I wasn't didn't really want, excited about doing that. But you could pay you can actually pay for the contracts themselves, so I thought that was at least nice. Another thing that I, I like change I liked about this one is I liked that they switched from having the virtual currency being used for everything to now for this one you can still use virtual coin currency but it's more expensive and you can use the my team specific my team points which I love and I love that when you play games you get to earn them the better you play the more you get and stuff like that and you can sell players for my team points and that was really cool and then, I didn't really understand the auction house. I never really got into the kind of stuff in other games, but now that I've kind of figured out how to use it, it's been really great, especially for both buying and selling. It's really interesting how it still keeps that same flavor of the previous version where you're testing out the market. So you can go and search for a player's card, and you can see, like, how much is he selling for? How, is there a lot of him available? Is there not a lot of him available? So it's a really interesting way to test the market. So if you get a player and you want to sell them, you can just do a quick search on how that player's doing. And if there's a lot of cards in the market where it's flooding it, especially like I used for a while, I would go and intentionally buy all the cheapest gold players because I thought it was the best value. I'm getting a really good solid player because obviously because he's gold and I'm getting him for a decent price. So, but then after a while, you start seeing the same players. You would see Josh Smith, Al Horford, you would see a lot of the, well, the legendary Knicks players. So it kind of became old. And you stopped really finding value there. So that's when I changed my mind and started realizing that, you know what, I really like playing in all the challenges. The challenges are really fun. 
And maybe on one of these, I'll play one of those challenges so you just see me be angry. I will not. I don't know if I'll ever do the um, the two super teams that are on there right now. There's the Durant pictured one, like the Ronnie 2K, where you can only use three silver players. And there's the other one where you're playing against all these Hall of Fame players and you can only get three gold. I played those so many times and I get super frustrated. Because it's just, why don't just let me use my full gold team? I'm playing against a team of legendary players, not just gold players, legendary players. Just let me use my own good players so I at least have a shot. Uh, I don't know, it's crazy. But there's, So I might play those challenges, we'll see. But for now, I am playing, like I was, I guess I'll get on that point, is what I do now is I buy, there's some of those challenges that I really like were the ones where, like there was recently the rodeo challenge where you have to play with at least eight Spurs players, there was the one play with at least eight Clippers, eight Lakers, stuff like that. And I thought that was really fun. So I like, so immediately of course when that challenge opens up, I go to the market and I buy all of the X players that I can from that team. The problem is, like any smart person should, if you're holding on to those players, you start putting them in the market for ex extended price. So now instead of getting a bronze player for about 500, you have to pay 700, 800, or something to a thousand coins for this bronze player who isn't worth that much. So it's kind of cool that the market still has an effect. But it, instead of it being about the real NBA, it's about what challenges and what kind of stuff's available. So I've started just now buying cheap bronze players so that in case one of those challenges comes up where I need players from a certain team, I should already have a good complement of players and not have to worry about buying overpriced versions of them. So that's what this team is. This team is all those bronze players that I've been getting. It's all my worst players. These are all ranked the lowest per their position. Because I have two point guards, two two guards, and then I have three of the small power and center because these games don't like big men. They don't think any big men are any good. Or at least there's a lot of them. So that's what I do with this team. So this is my grinding team, so I have contracts that I don't necessarily care about, and if I need to use the player, it's only 40 coins in order to get them for 5 contracts, which is a great deal. So, I always use these to grind, and I use them to play these challenges. <laughs> now, getting back to the game. I've got 35 seconds left, and I guess I'll just talk about that. I'm going to win. I'm just going to hold the ball here, and go to work. Uh, the three-point shooters. Maybe I close by watching it. I love three-point shooters. They just make so much, they especially make this game so much easier. They just make this game so much easier. I like that's my go-to move is I'll get into a big and roll, I'll drive the lane, and I'll hope and hopefully the wing defender will come off and try to guard me, and I just kick it out to the open man and knock down a three. I'm not quite sure exactly what they think they're going to So with that, this game is wrapping up. Uh, why'd you foul? Oh, yeah, I, think I did that, so yeah, okay. I can only blame myself. So this game is wrapping up. I'm going to pull off the win in my first series. Which is, maybe I'll keep a track of that. That right now I am 1-0 in my My Team Domination Mode events. But other than that, it was fun talking to you, and I think it was really cool, so hopefully you'll watch this on YouTube, and if, so, if you watch it on YouTube and you liked it on YouTube, then come back and watch the live thing on Twitch, and yeah, my Twitch channel is Brent Lucky, all one word, B-R-E-N-T-L-U-C-K-E-Y, -E -E same as my YouTube channel, and if you want to find out more information about when these videos are going to be posted and streamed, Check me out on Twitter at BRE Lucky. That's B R E L U C K E Y. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.